Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be looking at a filter called Shake Reduction. Let's jump into Photoshop and see what it is. So here I am in Photoshop, and you can see I've got this photograph of a pair of boots hanging up in York Museum. Now, the lighting conditions weren't very good, so I'm actually shooting this at 1 20th of a second, ISO 800. The slowest I usually like to go when I'm hand holding a shot is 1 60th of a second, so I'm pretty sure this is going to have some camera shake in it. Also at ISO 800, I think I'm going to have quite a bit of noise to contend with as well. I'm going to zoom in to 100% using Control or Command and pressing 1, and you can see that it's kind of out of focus and it's very grainy, so let's see if we can sort something out. Well, the filter we're going to use it can be used as a smart filter. So let's convert this to a smart object straight away. So we're going to right click on the layer here and convert to a smart object. Off it goes, does its thing. And then we can see that it's a smart object. Very good. Now I'm going to just go Command and Control 0 to fit it back on screen. Keep all nice and neat. And let's go to Filter and then Sharpen and then Shake Reduction. And we get a brand new dialog box. We see the main picture in the main part, of course, and then down the bottom right hand corner, we get a preview of what this filter is doing. And you can see that it's done its business and we've now got a preview. It's not quite how I want to see it. So you can see I've got a hand if I hover over the top of it, I can click and I can drag that around till I get something a bit more meaningful in my preview. And you may have seen it change there. That's because when this preview, if I click down, you can see the before and the after, so that's done a pretty good job straight off the bat. Above that, you can see a black square with a little white dot in it. This is where it's telling us the way that the camera moved, how it's estimated that it's moved. We can change this if we make this square a little bit smaller. The bit we're actually interested in is just the laces here. The rest, if it's out of focus, is fine, really. We just want the boots. I can move this around as well, should I wish, and I can add another one in. So I'm just drawing out another square and asking it to take that into consideration as well. In this particular instance, it's telling us there's too much. I'm struggling here and I've got this red triangle and that could be from the texture of the boots. So let's discard that one and let's try putting in another one. Let's go over here and try just there and see how it gets on. There we go. It's come up with something very similar to the first one. Now at the moment it's taking both of those into consideration and I can turn off either one I like to see if I'm getting a better job from one to the other. And in fact, the first one is the one that I like the best. And you're probably going to find this more often than not. In fact, nine times out of 10, I would estimate that you're just going to come in here, take all the defaults and leave. But while we're here, let's take a look at a couple of the sliders. I'm really interested in this one here, source noise. Now if I hang, just uh, hold it over the top here, it says specify source image noise. So I also take a look at the top left hand corner there. It says the setting should match the amount of noise in the source image for best results. Set to auto and that's doing a pretty good job. But if I drop this menu down, you can see low, medium and high. I think there was quite a high amount of noise in this image. So I'm going to click on high here and you can see that it's done a pretty reasonable job of clearing some of that up. Not great, but you know, it's, it's a start. Next down, we've got this smoothing and again, I'll hold over the top so you can see the tooltip smooth sharpening induced noise. So it's taken some of the noise, it sharpened it, but we may not want it to do that. And again, top left hand corner, reduce high frequency or grain like noise in the result induced by sharpening best thing to do is have a play with the slider. So let's do that. I'm going to take this slider right up to 100% and we can see how it kind of smooths out the whole image, or at least I was expecting it to, uh, or none at all. Let's try this again, shall we? Let's go smooth right up to 100%. Absolutely nothing happening. Up. Oh, let's click on this. And let's go 100%. There we go. So a little reminder that you have to be on the right squared box there to uh, get the results. We live and learn. Okay, and I'm going to take this right back down to the bottom here. And you can see it's giving no 
smoothing at all and we've gone very grainy so i want to find a place where we've got a bit of smoothing going on and we're not losing too much detail i'm going to take it to around about for this image around about halfway 56 that'll do me artifact suppression again let's hover over the top the tooltip says it suppresses large artifacts and the top left says reduce larger artifacts in the result induced by sharpening so it's grainy really big pieces of grain let's see if we can get rid of those again 100 percent we can see that it smooths it down actually quite nicely for this image even at 100 percent and taking it down you can see that we get some of that noise back i'm going to go quite high with this one because it's quite a lot of grain in there so let's have a look at the before and after again so before and after before and after we've made one heck of a change here let's click ok off it goes and now it's a smart filter on a smart object we can go back into that anytime we like so just a reminder we can go up to filter we can come down to sharpen and shake reduction and that's going to take us into a new dialog box let's go command and control one just to have another look much better much clearer image much happier with that and control or command zero fit it back on screen there we go i'm eric rano this has been a video for tipsquirrel.com I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.